Welcome to the Three Piece Podcast, a show where three Call of Duty amateurs discuss player development to improve your in-game performance. New episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. EST to start your week off with a scoop of inspiration. Oh man, where, how I got into Call of Duty? Uh, well, I, my first COD was Black Ops Two, and uh, I started like watching like Scumpy and Nate Shot and all of them, like you know the OGs. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know I, I started watching Scump Pub Stomp and like stuff like that, and I started got get into his like Twitch streams. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really get into like comp until like around Ghosts when I started playing like GBs with mm-hmm. some of my friends. Um. And my god, we were horrible. Like I'm not even kidding, bro. Like our our GB record, I think we we won four times and we lost 160. No, I'm not Damn. even kidding. We were that bad. Yeah, At we were like the pub playing. kids. Yeah, no, no, for sure. We started, We kept playing. I mean, I was on a I was on a uh, on a flat screen in my in my living room mm-hmm. with with a kitchen chair. You know, yeah. like I had nothing, nothing. I didn't have a scuff. I, I had nothing. Stuff. Um, I didn't play claw either, so I was completely at a disadvantage. Uh, but then when I actually started playing, like when I actually started scrimming and stuff, it was probably in AW when I got more into like the community. Uh, I think that's where I met Tripsy. Yeah. I think yeah, it's been a minute. So, uh, yeah, I think in that year, like later in the year, that's where I met him, and that's uh, that that's the first year I actually scrimmed. But I didn't actually get into like the local scene itself. That was more just online scrimming uh, until BO3. That's that's when I first went to my first local. Um, so... Yeah. So where I'm where I am now though. Uh, after BO4 champs, I, I kind of stopped playing. I'm planning on coming back now next year when I because I'm 18. But I, I, I took a break from Modern Warfare. It was my senior year and stuff, so I just focused on myself. So. Go ahead, yeah, man. Yep. Colby. All right. Uh, shit. I think my first COD was Modern Warfare 3. Um, played pubs in it. God awful. Like I don't think I get more five more than five kills. I'm like a dom. Um, Black Ops 2, I didn't really, still didn't know a lot about competitive. I kind of focused on zombies. When Ghost came out, uh, I didn't really like it because as a kid, dying that fast, like, wasn't that fun. So I went back to BO2 and I picked up feeding and sniping. Um, I think AW was my first quote unquote competitive COD because that's when I started playing UMGs and stuff. That started out because uh, the first half of the year I was pub stomping and I got into a clan and they started making us play UMGs, which if you guys, I know Liam might remember, do you remember uh, Flux, Shield? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's where I met him and me and him used to just grind dubs all day. Um, I think Black Ops 3 was first, first time like actually scrimming. I know, I don't remember who my first two teammates were, but I know I teamed with God Assist. That was like, he was a part of my first team. Um, where I am now, on and off plan, uh, took most World War II and Black Ops 4 off, picked it back up with MW, considering I was 17, turning 18, and, uh, hopefully gonna play Cold War year-round because I'll be 18 all year. So, yeah. You better be competing, boy. You're too fucking good not to, both of you. So, the way I really got into it, uh, I had two friends that I was close with. They were playing Halo 3 and Black Ops 1 all the time, and he was like, bro, you gotta try this Nazi zombie thing. So I played that a couple times with him, and I immediately got hooked. I took my birthday money, bought an Xbox 360 off of eBay for like 130 bucks or some shit, and then I just grinded Black Ops 1, just zombies. End the campaign, nothing else, didn't have Xbox Live or anything. But I, I knew playing that that there was something about that that was just so much more fun than anything else I had tried. So I just kept playing that. And then I eventually got into competitive around like Black Ops 2. Me and my friends were playing pubs. And we were like, yo, let's try calling out and like see how the pros go, like whatever. And we were calling out and we were like, yo, this is fun as fuck. So then I just started playing League Play. And then I started watching Fear Moho back in Black Ops 2. And like back then, it was like a whole different community. And ever since then, I've just been playing. Uh, I took a break, late ghost, and then I saw my homie Logan Remark at an event, and he was getting gassed up by pros. He plays, like, really good at Nashville, and I was like, damn, I was just teaming with you, like, two weeks ago, and now I'm at a lacrosse camp, and you're at a 
professional tournament. So it kind of lit a fire under my ass. I got jealous as fuck, and I've been playing ever since then. And then I gave it up in sophomore year. Or no, no, no. Yeah, like towards the end of IW, I think going into World War II is when I really stopped playing too much. And then I started picking it back up in Modern Warfare, and I didn't really get too far. So I'm here. Trying I guess to I'm the only person that actually played in World War II. Yeah. And that was a, that was a good comp game, I'm telling you. Was it was it? a really good comp game, yeah. See, I just played GBs in like the first two months, and I was playing like S and D and like wagers and shit, but never competed. No hard point. I don't. I don't think I played. A yeah, man, that, that that game. Uh, oh, my God. The thing with World War Two for me is how it is. Is like every game where it's like I just. I mean, me and John were talking about it with uh, Kuda last night, but like my whole thing is. I do think I'm better than like who I play with and that's a bad habit of mine. So like when I'm playing and I'm losing and I'm losing, like it just makes me want to quit. So mm -hmm. I did, but yeah, the same thing that happened in modern warfare. When I came back in December, I quit like middle of January just cause I wasn't on a winning team. But then we came back in May team with John and Chaz and we even got Mako back and we kept on losing, but we, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we did. Oh man, that was such a rough time because I felt like I was trying so hard and it was always my fault for something. And it was like, it wasn't even like you guys were just trying to put it on me. It was like, I genuinely was making all the faults and it was like, I didn't know what I was doing so wrong all the time. And the only way that it was going about was just, you're fucking bad. You're doing this wrong and get better. And I was just, I, I think there was one time that you guys sat down and was like, this is how you should do it. And that was the time that <laughs> we were like, we got to think about Hackney as like a three-way like diagonal. And I was like, oh, this is MW. no way. Yeah. I was like, why have I not been thinking about it like this before? I was like, and then right after that, I was dropping 30s. I was like, easy. Like I was playing fine. And it was like, it was like, even when... <laughs> Even when I would try and like sit down with you personally and like help you because I knew like the screaming so, at you, yes. like would it help? Like Chad would still be there, like in the moment and being like, "Dude, look what I'm doing. You see that? I'm making the right play." But you guys are playing two completely different roles. I know, and so it's, it's like, like what he what he's doing right. It does not gonna be the right play for you. Exactly, and it was like I was also trying to learn an AR role, and then all of a sudden it's okay. Now you're gonna be an SMG. I was like, all right, I like, I'm, I'm fine with trying to learn it, but then it was like, at least give me a little bit of slack, because I've never been an SMG in every game, and I always, I warned you guys, I was like, I'm going to be dog shit, and even you were saying I was better with an SMG than an AR, it was just, I had to learn the positioning for me, and I was taking too long to adapt, I think that's one of the biggest things in this game of Call of Duty, is you really have to learn how to adapt really fucking quick, because... You know, every year it's a new game. Yeah, it changes. And that's 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 the one thing. It's weird because you know, like games like League of Legends years ago, they don't change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they got they got especially League of Legends. Like they have like big like updates and mm -hmm. and meta changes and stuff like that, which keeps the game fresh. But like the core game itself, like stays the same. Yeah. But COD every year, like everything changes. Like the only thing that stays like even slightly the same is kind of the game modes. Like Surgeon Star and Hardpoint are kind of like a set in stone at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this mm -hmm. year we had domination and other years we had uplink or capture flag and stuff like that but um you know bro i feel yeah, like capture I'm, the flag should have been in this game i, I they, feel like it would have worked players, but it was just so they it was so broken like you, you know speed ball speed ball it's no okay. no registration on the flag or anything like that right. but i remember watching uh karma when he was on the hex podcast and he was talking about how um like this was the first year where like there was nothing about poor Call of Duty in it. He was like, he broke it down. He was mm -hmm. like, Black Ops Three or Advanced Warfare was about when Titanfall was coming out. So you had jetpacks introduced, but it was still four v four, still basic yeah. COD stuff. And then he just went through every year, and he was mm -hmm. like, it it just eventually got out of hand. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's it's actually crazy how much it's changed. I mean, like. BO4 it was kind of similar to other CODs with like, you know, these like the spawn systems and stuff like that. Um, but they went to 5v5, which I didn't I didn't like. I think it added like another level of randomness to the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. That, uh, I, I just yeah, I wasn't a fan of. At first I was like, you know, I could see how I, I could see where this was going with like uh franchising everything coming in because they wanted to kind of merge, kind of do what CSGO and other uh esports do, make it more like, you know, like have the public scene connected mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. the competitive scene, but 
that's not what happened at all because then you know mw comes out and they make it six people lobbies again yeah. so it's just like you know it's hey. and, uh, like i said i don't have a lot of experience with mw a lot of my experience is every other god but yeah i mean like so broken i don't yeah it's not the game just looks like a mess i mean i these people who are you know sitting down playing eight hours of it a day like props to you like uh, that that's not fun, bro. That's a chore. That that's not a hot like you know. That's it's, not like, it's one of those games where it's like if you're winning, you're winning, and if you're losing, it just feels like you're just getting pulled down. You are losing, man. I it mean, was... like, yeah. No, what now go. I say? Go ahead. I was gonna say uh, that, like, um, with what you're saying, it's like I think a problem with like pods and like what they tr what they need to try to fix is. Or at least with the future CODs, I hope Cold War they do, do it better with like, um, I mean, I heard there's some rumors with 44, but I don't know how credible that is. Like, I, I don't, yeah, there, who knows what a, happens. There's been a couple of clips of like pros hand at it, like attached. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen yeah. the attached clip? I've no, seen I him. haven't. I saw he that. Was, uh, he was playing, I think he was playing just like CDL playlist and like he got like a four piece and died to the fifth guy or like he didn't know where the fifth guy was until he died to him. And, like in a stream, he goes, at least next year, I won't, at least next year, I only have to worry about four people. Mm hmm. And then you just have all these like nade shots in a NDA right now where like he can't speak much on it. I saw that's that. good. So. That's good. Yeah, it's just randomness, man. COD can't be a random video game because at its core, COD's super simple. Like compared to other esports, like super, super simple. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, I don't know how many other esports y'all play, but like, have you ever tried just, to like, watch played. League of Legends, bro? I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> well, see, I I'm like I actually play League of Legends. Uh, okay. Like, yeah, I know what all that shit is. Um. But uh, I when I went like before I started playing because I picked it up like in like May, mm -hmm. before the summer, and man before that like it's such a hard game to get into. Yeah. It's really fun. It's really addicting. It's just like it, it, it's hard to get into because way, way too big of a skill gap. Like it's the biggest skill gap in like any video game. So. It's really like that. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's because like it's caught at at its core. It's really simple. Like mm -hmm. learning the spawns and how to manipulate them and yeah. you know being able to hit your shots and stuff like that. But then there's other video games. Um, which is just so much more complicated. And when a video game as simple is so random, it's like not fun. Yeah. You, know, you, you can't have the spawn system MW has and expect for the competitive scene to be happy. So. I agree. And I, I feel like that kind of brings it into the point that I wanted to ask was even though the game changes every year and like there's so much adapting that we have to do and like even if the game is super random you really can't do as much as you want to be able to do like it's so much is out of your control what really separates a good player and a bad player like what is going to excel someone into the next level uh so you can, you can go ahead oh man i don't know that I don't. I don't think I have a good input. I don't think I'm qualified for this. All right, um, Colby. You and I were talking last night. You know, you and I are like I said last night, kind of like puzzle pieces in the way like of our aspects. I feel like you excel a lot more in game than I do, and out of game, I know a lot more than you do. And you even like last night, you were saying my brain's fried. I don't even know what you're saying. I was like, dude, this is. I could go on about dude, that. Because you were like hit me with all these like out of game things i'm like dude i just know how to read spawns and shoot straight like that's all i know how to do um i guess so i guess i'll do it i'll put it into two versions so i think the way that the community is mm -hmm. i think the way the community is nowadays mm -hmm. i think to the community a good player somebody who puts them out like puts themselves out a lot um, especially on twitter like you'll see these guys who like in the back of your head you're like he's not that good but he'll have four or five times as many followers as you do like right. i think i think i only have like 500 followers or something like that but there's these guys with over 2000 and it's like and man, I, I used to i used to gun those kids it's crazy dude like just like speak on the follower part i had 1200 followers before like i stopped playing like a year ago now i have 850 Literally i lost 400 followers like crazy third of my following is gone now i don't i'm not worried about getting that back like genuinely like it's all like just kind of like you know kids who like only play cod it's not anyone that i really care about yeah. Like everyone yeah. who I like actually cared, if you were to say like who followed me still follow me. But like yeah, it just it's crazy actually how fast people people forget. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the big things about Call of Duty is so many people just every year, if they don't like the game, they just stop playing and nobody's gonna know about you. So when you try yeah. to come back, you have to start from nothing all over again. 
at least you're gonna have some of the connections that you had before but yeah like, i see that those i'm people, definitely not yeah even those people are gonna be like dude i don't know like you haven't played for a little bit like i'd rather play with these people that i know are good and like these people are gonna get me somewhere rather than trying to help you out right right so, i mean yeah yeah it depends how close you are with your connections as well yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. i like chris like we were i mean you guys on like chris radio like he, you know, I'm really close to them, and he knows that like when I actually play COD, like how good I can be. Mm -hmm. He's not, he wouldn't be worried about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, it is what it is. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be at the same place I was, but I've always been in a weird spot with networking. Mm -hmm. I've always known so many people and been able to talk to so many people. Um, I just like it was weird because all the S and D kids, like I, I was friends with like you know like a lot of like the higher higher tier S and D players, mm -hmm. but a, a lot of them wouldn't even want to play with me because they would think of me as a respawn kid because I would go to locals, right? Yeah. And then vice versa, like the local kids wouldn't want to play with like the, and I don't mean like the NJ Raw local kids, I mean like the actual genuine good ones who go to majors and stuff, mm -hmm. wouldn't want to play with me because they would think I'm an S&D kid. So I was always in that weird gray area. But whenever I played with them, I always played well. It was just, just kind of a weird spot. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel that one. I feel like there's a lot of people that I know that are pretty high status and like I'm good friends with. And even seeing them now, like they, they're friends with pros. <laughs> Like, they're friends with these right. people that are so big, and it's like, you know, I, I obviously mean nothing in this spectrum, but it's just like, these people are so close to me, and they're so close to these people. It like, it's so easy for people to just talk about something outside of game-related topic and just make such a good friendship. Like, I know Logan Remark is really good friends with Quavo Kenny, mm. you know, on Optic, all just because of shoes, and like, out of, like not right. even about gaming shit. But now, if he were to want to go and try gaming again, they were that close that he could literally just be like, yeah, bro, play with you on two streams, and then everybody knows who he is at that point. Right. It's like, connections can just either get you so far or get you nowhere. You just have to be, I think, yeah. really intentional with what you do and not abuse connections solely for your gain, you know? A lot of people yeah. I see just trying to do that shit, and it's just when you, it's super corny. When it, when it comes to when it comes to networking, you have to understand that people yeah. like a, a lot of people want something out of things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you can't just do everything for yourself. You have to do something for other people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and honestly, you'd be surprised. Not a lot of people actually like intentionally network in this community. A lot of it's luck. Yep. Yeah. So the people who actually learn how to network, and you know, a lot of it is like you know whether we want to admit it or not, we're in a gaming community. A lot of like a lot of people don't really have like the social skills that you would if you know in yeah. other aspects of life so a lot of kids like just it's, it just kind of comes but for the people who do know how to network you know a good example would be like uh max like lights fire yeah like he's you know he's a really social guy he's like you know he knows how to communicate and stuff like that so that he gets connections really easily yeah uh, you know people who know how to do it you know can really abuse it yeah not in a bad way but you know what i mean yeah 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 i mean obviously if you know how to get ahead, like you, you gotta right. play into your strengths, bro. I was telling Colby last night that a lot of people in COD like they try to do it all, but you're in a, a team scenario. You should be designing your environment to cater to what you lack in and what you succeed in, to not even just help you, you know, grow in that area. But then you're also helping other people grow in that area. Like, like I was saying with Colby, like if I'm better at stuff out of game. I can help him promote, you know, like the things that he does, like maybe little things that he doesn't even realize. Like literally I was talking to Ryan about it last night. Some of the craziest shit that you wouldn't even think of, like the deodorant that you could be using could literally be in putting some weird toxins into your body that can actually fuck with your focus and like your eyes and shit. And like that could just one split second thing. Like it's not even just that, but like all the things that add up like little yeah no it's, like it's, it sounds it's it sounds the, silly and people can laugh but yeah, yeah no it, it really like drinking g fuel bro i'm gonna tell you this right now there's excessive amounts of lead in that shit and if you drink that shit every day you're gonna think oh i'm getting so good because i'm playing on this shit and then all of a sudden look into the effects of lead poisoning bro the yeah. that shit is horrible for your body like your joints are disconnecting like they're literally breaking down so it's like then at that point your fingers are all fucked up. How are you supposed to win a gunfight if your fingers are like literally deteriorating? Instead, you think you're just drinking this shit. Yeah, yeah health, really health is so important. I think the other thing too, and this kind of helps because I am like really delved into like uh, sports medicine, like health and fitness and all that crap. And so 
and this is just basic anyways, but like mm-hmm. you build up tolerance and stuff. And I speak from existence. I have a really high caffeine tolerance. Mm-hmm. Like when I go to the gym, my pre-workout says don't exceed two scoops in 24 hours. I have to take four scoops worth of work. Like that's just not healthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's why I always stay away from like G fuel and stuff. Cause I'm like, that stuff's gonna, I'm gonna be like, Oh, today I'm gonna try two scoops instead of one. And then next day it's three and it just keeps on building up. Right. And that shit's expensive too. Yeah. That's one of the big things a lot of people don't in this gaming industry re- don't realize. Okay, so when you really get into gaming, it's all because it's not necessarily every time, but a lot of the time it's a it's a form of escapism. So when you get into this kind right. of thing, you're you're trying to get away from reality. You're just trying to put your focus into something. You get addicted to the shit. Like there there's oh, endorphins sure. being released. Video games are addictive. There's no doubt about it. So if your personality is being promoted or to be addictive, any kind of substance that you're going to be abusing at all, you're shit, kind, yeah. you're, it's kind of inevitable. A lot of, like, how many gamers do you think have substance abuse issues? How many people do you oh, always yeah. see me. tweeting out about? Bro, it's horrible. Locals, man. Locals, man. Adderall, G Fuel. Crazy. Crazy. Bro, Scrappy was on, like, what, six coffees or some shit? <laughs> he walked up to yeah. me. Like, I never talked to the kid, and he's like, dude, I'm on, like, 12 coffees. I'm like, Bro, you don't even he, like he, me. Why are you? He, de- he, he, def- he definitely gassed it, but uh, he 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 yeah. like on some real shit though. Like, is I've never taken Adderall. Mm-hmm. I've never taken Adderall. I've drank G Fuel. I honestly personally don't like it that much. So I mean, guess that's good. Uh, I had I bought I bought like some in like AW and it lasted me for like a few months. But other than that, I, I don't really take like I I'm I'm not tolerant at all. Like n- nothing like you, Chips. Do. Like I. I'm not talking at all to caffeine. Like, I remember, given yeah, I mean, it's been a few years, but last time I drank G Fuel, I would, like, start shaking, bro, and that's G Fuel, you know? So, I think I'm older now, so I'm definitely more resistant because I'll have coffee sometimes, like, occasionally, not often. Really? But, uh, yeah, there's some people, like, I, I, I mean, y'all know Simp. Like, that dude was caffeine addict, bro, addict. I, I don't know if he still is, but back in, like, BO3, IW, World War II, those times, Jesus, that man would tear through monsters tear yeah. through monsters and they have so much caffeine in them yeah that's not healthy like at all health is really overlooked i think i think another thing too is people mix up the difference between using like supplements like g fuel and then coming up with like routines it's gonna sound really really dumb but there is a stretch during the valorant beta where like i was grinding it out and i was grinding out ranked and mm-hmm. my whole thing like my routine would be i would eat a beef burrito and I'd fry the entire night. If I didn't have that burrito, I mean, it may have been a whole superstition thing, but if I did not eat that one beef burrito, I was playing like shit the entire night. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more of a super, it's the same thing with like, um, like protein shakes, for example. Like they should, yes, it's easy calories and easy protein because you can just chug it in a minute, but it is still better to have like the real food. food. Right. Yeah. So I think, I think it's the same thing with like people who are, again drinking like g fuel or pre-workout instead of just drinking water or even if they're having like a monster or two yeah no there's definitely a lot of shit that goes into like eating meat for instance like what you're saying uh i watch a lot of joe rogan podcasts and i think what he was saying on one of them like when you eat the meat that as a man it releases so much more um fuck what i feel stupid the uh testosterone and yeah. obviously in a male, you don't really realize, but your performance levels in just about everything, when your testosterone levels are higher, your performance is going to be higher. So like in game, yeah. right? Like your focus is going to be so much crazier than it would be if you had just busted a fat nut and then turned around, turned the corner and got a controller in your hand. Like you just released everything. Now all of a sudden you have no motivation to do something versus if you just ate a fat steak, you're like, you got so much testosterone building up in your body. Like, right. you know, you get the protein and obviously all the other factors that come into eating a, a full meal. But, like, you know, a lot of people, and I say especially, like, I was talking to Ryan about it. Like, the, the whole no-fat movement, I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's super corny, but there is actually some truth to it. And I kind of want to try to spread that around the COD community especially because you know these kids are beating their meats all the time. I made a <laughs> joke to Ryan and I was gonna put it in my video and it was like a skit and I was handing like a bottle of lube over and it said not lube on the side and he went, hold up, and turned around and picked up a bottle of lube. And I'm like, bro, the first gamer I'm showing this to, it has lube, like everybody's gonna be able to relate to this, but I couldn't, but I just feel like 
so many people are so insecure and there's so many negatives and like oh dude there's some horrible shit from watching so much porn and stuff that i don't know if you guys look into it but it's bad for you I, yeah i think it's funny because you guys know the whole like no not november thing mm-hmm. like that whole trend like me and my friends like well i actually do it and uh we also all live together and so me wow. and the one other guy went like 25 days or something like that and our PRs with lifting spiked up significantly. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think I've hit any of the PRs I hit back in November. Because mm-hmm. it's just, and like he said the same thing. He was like, he would go like weeks because he does track, like he throws in track and field. He said he would go weeks before events without doing it just so that he had that extra performance because he said it felt like he threw better. Yeah. It's, bro, that is some crazy shit. There's so many things that, people don't take into consideration especially in call of duty like with your body and your health like there's so many ways that you can excel rather than using a substance like all the adderall abuse all the caffeine abuse and now i don't know if you guys have seen the valvidian shit or whatever it is that's Um, it's like i don't know what it is some new tropic that they made it's supposed supposed to be um i haven't listened to it much but it's supposed to be like uh replacement for adderall but it's like at the end of the day it's going to turn into the exact same shit same thing yeah it's like mm-hmm. it's, supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a healthier adderall but again i think any all right that's all a trap bro that's, yeah i think it's all yeah it's all bullshit I, I, th- I think any stimulant that you're using for competitive call of duty is i mean i i don't care if they make it illegal or not but i think from like a player perspective like i think a if you're relying on that then you're not i just don't think you're truthful to yourself like no the, kid, the kids who scrim without it it's like practice how you play if you're going to scrim without it losing scrims and then come time for a challenger's cup you're going to pop 200 or however like whatever the dosage is or even more than that like it's just not healthy yeah no um this past year <laughs> like when since i've been playing call of duty i've been playing a lot of basketball and i've been training a lot for it and i've kept my health up uh, i've gotten a lot more in shape and you know you really realize that like sports compared to esports like the biggest thing is the mindsets and the health are completely different i mean you can't like necessarily knock esports for just generally having worse health because i mean you don't need to be healthy to like i mean you, you can look i don't need to name names but you can look at pros in every esport who just you know you can blatantly tell aren't you know in shape right uh versus sports you almost never see it um and if they aren't healthy they don't last long but it's like you know it's it's kind it's kind of sad because you know it's it's still important regardless and like the small things especially in a video game like cod really do add up and people don't realize it yeah it's like yeah it's i don't know it's it's really overlooked and sad. i think i think the craziest example is um beach you know black ops 3 iw he was he was really large like that was like whenever and he was like one of those guys that always try and start shit with you and he would sit there and he would talk shit to you and then kind of be the whole coming up of like, oh, that's why you're fat, blah, blah, blah. But like, he's fucking jacked now. Mm-hmm. Like, he he dropped COD, he got into the gym, and he looks amazing now. So it's like yeah. one of the things where it's like, um, and it's not even like people can't do it while still playing. Yeah. Like, for example, take like Shoxy's team, for example. Like, going into champs, they weren't scrimming until four mainly because Shoxy was sleeping in so late, but it's like that, Fine, that, means, that means you have from whenever you wake up in the morning until four to go get not even a lifting session and just a run in or a walk in, just be outside for a little bit. You know, it's, it's like you, like you're saying, it's a complete mindset shift, man. Like it, it, cause you can get away with it in COD. That's the thing, you know, you can't yeah. get away with that in sports at all. Yeah. And if you do like, do <laughs> you know, you're not getting nowhere. That's why that's, I'm that's really the... trying. Oh shit! Go ahead, keep going. No, 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 you're good, you're good. You're good. I was gonna say that. That's why I'm really trying to start this YouTube channel, just because a lot of people, like we were saying, especially in the COD community, can just get away with not doing these things because they think, oh, it's just video games. But okay, so I don't know if you guys read. I've been reading a lot lately, and one of the books I really like is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. I would suggest it to both of you if you're into that shit. Listen to the audio book while you're shooting your bots, whatever. Anyway, one of the first things that he talks about is they took the British cycling team going from they were so bad that bike companies were refusing to let them ride their bikes because it would demote their brand that bad. They took the British cycling team. 
it took them from that <laughs> to winning world what? world cups all left and right they had won like the olympics like three times in a row or something crazy like that they just went crazy because they changed their coach and the coach's philosophy was making one percent changes every single day because it's it's all about like everybody tries to just push themselves you know like american culture if you're training for boxing for instance you're going into the gym beating the shit out of each other you know going crazy but brazilians they just hop into the ring they're kind of sprawling they're having fun they're joking around laughing and they do it every single day rather than going in lifting ripping their bodies apart for three days out of the week and then having to take a rest day instead you just make one percent change every day and in turn you're going to be working just as much as the other people but you're going to be so much further than everyone else because you're consistently making changes rather than small chunks of big change so one of the things that he was talking about like i was saying like even though it sounds super bizarre like i was saying with the deodorant thing they literally were talking about like the um the therapy creams that they were putting on their bodies they were trying to use the best and most efficient one like they broke down the type of seats that they were sitting on like the soap that they were using to alter their performance and literally making one change every single day like the littlest thing they like i said went from the absolute worst to the absolute best cycling team in the span of a couple years and if people can kind of take that mindset and really think about all the outside of the game factors that really really do play into your part and like i said it, it is pretty bizarre but like I just I was using Old Spice deodorant for the longest time. Never once thought about my deodorant being an issue. It got to the point my armpits hurt. I couldn't put my arms down, and like no matter what, it was just super sore. I started using some hippie deodorant I saw on the internet that's like healthy for your body, and bro, I genuinely feel better. Like it is crazy. Same with my soap. I was using like straight up detergent. There's an app called Think Dirty. You just type in your product, whatever body product it is, and it shows you all the harmful chemicals, all of the bad side effects that it has to your body like there's some of these things that are just killing people they don't even realize they're just putting their body every day and it's like if you want to be good i'm not saying if you want to be good at cod do these things but i'm saying like if you want to have the little edge over someone like go deep into every little aspect of your life and really make some out of life changes like wake up in the morning make your fucking bed go outside for a walk or a run Like, it's the very first things that you do in the day that really the first 15 minutes of your day are the most influential minutes of your day. And if you can get those minutes down by immediately discipline, like making your bed, mine's not like super made, but it's done something to the point where it's, okay, I get out of bed, I make my bed, and it's like, okay, what's next? What do I do next? Rather than waking up fucking, and then saying, okay, what's up, Twitter? Anyone trying to play COD? And then hop on the toy. Like, the schedules that these people in Call of Duty have, and like I myself, I fell to it for a long time. It's just horrendous, and I feel like there needs to be a movement that really pushes like the out of game development of players because it can really make this esport last a lot longer. I feel if people are a lot healthier and mentally just not drained, there needs to be a balance. Yeah. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like out of game stuff means just as much as it could. No, I, I mean I I completely agree. Like I I really do. Like uh, I I can explain it in any other words than what you said, but I just think that the like the sucky part about it is that unless esports becomes like something transcendent, like something on like the level of genuine sports or something close to it, that's not gonna happen. Because like I said, like we're it's a it's a business where you can get away with being unhealthy. You know, you can get away with not taking care of yourself because it's a video game at the end of the day, yep. you know? You know, like, yes, it's it's definitely, like, you know, healthier people people are going to have higher reaction times, but there's still people, like, who have good reaction time and are unhealthy, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. and there's people, like, they can just get away with that stuff. And, and honestly, most, like, most people aren't in, the, in our community aren't healthy at all. Mm-mm. And there's plenty of them who are still incredibly good at the video, I, I like, get cod. so it's... Oh, yeah. No matter how much you preach it, um, either A, they don't feel like they need to, two, they might not be in the mindset like that we are, yeah. and three, they just, you know, they just don't want to do it. So it's, yeah, no, I agree. It, it's hard. Yeah, that's why I, uh, like I said, really want to try to push it. I know it's going to be difficult to do, but I feel like some people can probably resonate with it. I feel like if some people can resonate with it, everyone's going to be able to resonate with some point of it, at least like. Like I was saying in one of my videos, like just meditating, man. Like you can be sitting in a play 
and you guys don't really know the powers of meditation like one of the biggest things is an itch if you feel an itch while you're meditating one of the points is to not move and to not is to resist that itch to just be present in everything going on and eventually you don't feel that itch anymore it just goes away you didn't itch it it's just gone if you do that same concept and bring it into COD, like I was saying in one of my videos, you're preaming something, your teammates are getting shot on the other side of the map, but you just feel that someone's gonna be lurking on this other side of the map. If you just wait for a couple seconds, like your intuition would think, you get that easy kill, then you wrap, you have full map control, versus turning around and then they just getting that shot off. It's like little things like that. It's obviously, I'm going the super bizarre, but I'm trying to be over exaggerated with this. Like, I just feel like there's so many little things like that. I, I don't i don't think it's i don't think it's bizarre to like at all man like you know i mean like the late kobe bryant it sucks that i have to say that but like you know he had a lot of that stuff too you know it seems crazy but it's like you know it's real you know and that stuff adds up like way more than people think you know it, it's it, it really does give you an advantage because then you then you'd be talking to other people like that and, and explaining your mindset and they're like what the hell is this guy talking about like you know i've done already so much and i haven't even thought about this before you know yeah but like you know, it's it's some real, it's real shit, bro. Yeah. So, so uh, what do you guys think are some of the best ways that you could improve your out of game life? Not even like in some Call of Duty thing, like person to person. What are some things that you guys do on a day to day that you just you're not happy with? Because I guarantee there's so many things in this COD community that people aren't happy with in their day to day life. And I'm not saying you guys are unhappy with the things you do, but what are some things that you would want to change? Do you want to go? Oh, ah, you go, you go. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> um, I think overall, I think the biggest thing for me out of game, like not really the COD at all, is just my personal health. Um, like I've always been really insecure about the way I look and I don't think it's like, I don't, I'm not doing it for like for cod. Like I'm not trying to drop weight for cod. And like, I mean, you guys, I'm not, I don't think you guys have any seen recent pictures of me, but like I play lacrosse. So I'm generally in shape. I'm probably stronger than your average person, but it's just for me personally, I'm just not, I'm just not where I want to be. And so it's come down to a discipline thing. And so one thing I'm trying to work on really is get into a routine. Like I have my routine when I get on COD, like I don't really shoot bots. I just jump on and I sit there for a little bit. And I just get into this mental dark spaces. My dad likes to call it when he works out. Like it's this dark space where it's like, you don't notice anything else. Like you're just, it's tunnel vision basically. Um, so, I mean, outside of the game right now, I'm just trying to work on a routine. Like once college starts up on Monday, like it's going to be lift in the morning, classes throughout the morning until lunch, and then COD for the afternoon, um, going into Cold War. So just trying to get on that routine before Cold War comes around. I think that's a good vibe. Uh, for me personally, I mean, like this whole year I've been, you know, I mean like crazy, like when it comes to like fixing like my routines and everything i mean like during the whole school year like i'm not kidding i would wake up at five go to the gym go to school come back be at the gym till seven like that's what i was doing non-stop just playing basketball and stuff so i was crazy dedicated but um this coronavirus stuff definitely threw me off uh because i didn't have a gym to go to i didn't have basketball course to go to no one wanted to go outside i mean i live uh, i live to some like uh next to some basketball courts but like it's just i don't know it's like I, I live in, I live like right next to the city and down the city that's like the ghetto mm -hmm. um and I don't know it's you know not many white people who can really pass and play basketball you know around that area so I didn't really want to mess with that um and none of my boys play around there either so you know it was, it was kind of hard I have a basketball hoop outside um and I've been and, and I'm now that the gyms are open I've been trying to go more but it's it's really tr hard to kind of get back into a routine of things uh I've been making a good effort to like really work out and uh, trying to get back to where I was before, but like I said, there's not many assets now because the world's completely gone on hold. So for me, it's more of um, not necessarily starting to keep myself healthy because I am healthy and I'm doing things, but kind of get back to the standard that I want to be at again. Um, so whether that's um, maybe going on Amazon because I have money. It's it's not like I don't have money. It's like my own money where I can just buy weights and 
buy like more things I can do at home because I do have stuff, but I can only do it for like certain things. Like, um, I like for me when I work out. I'm not sure about you, Tripsy, and I'm not sure if you work out, John, but um, I uh, I split up into two days, right, with different things, and then uh, like third day was like um other stuff, and I can only do like really half of the stuff at home, and the other half of the stuff I've been lacking on because I haven't been going to the gym as much as I used to. So uh, for me, it's really just kind of figuring out how I'm going to get myself to, you know, meet the standards that I want to be at. So. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people really should be focusing on, especially right now in the off season. I see a lot of people just playing throwback tournaments and wagers and still scrimming on Modern Warfare. Like, dude, champs yeah. is over. I saw Nick Gunky tweeting out for a scrim. Like, bro, why are you trying to scrim? No one is... I get trying to stay warm on this game, but if you're trying to do something next year, I feel like you should really just focus on your health right now because in the world that we're in, especially when Cold War comes, it, it's only going to get worse when the it's cold out, the virus, no matter how you perceive this virus, it's spread even further through the air when it's colder and it's even deadlier in the cold because your immune system is weakened. So if you're not focusing on your health and you want to just grind out this video game when Cold War comes and then you get sick, like, it, it, it could just be the death of you. Just simply yeah. off of not giving a fuck about your health and just continuing to grind Call of Duty when no one else even gives a fuck. Because honestly, anything you do right now, no one's going to care about when Cold War drops. Not everything, but a lot of the stuff, like, you're playing a couple wagers. Well, networking. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Exactly. I talked about it in my video. Like, I just feel like the playing aspect, stay warm, but it should not be your number one focus. And I think, I think one thing people are mixing up too is obviously we got the info that um, Cold War is going to be the same engine as Modern Warfare, but that doesn't mean there's going to be slide canceling, 10 mil Merc. Like, that's not all going to be in the same game. Like, once you figure out if it's. 4v4, 5v5, like that's going to determine whether I'm grinding out Black Ops 4 or World War 2 personally. Probably World War 2 because overall World War 2 is my weaker game because I'm just a really fast player and World War 2 it's really hard to get that tempo up without playing like an idiot. So like if I'm if I'm one of those guys on Modern Warfare right now, I'm dropping Modern Warfare, I'm waiting for more info probably after champs. Um, I mean, we have the reveal in what two days, four days? Yeah, the twenty sixth, I think. Yeah, right. four, days. Oh, four days. days. I've been, I've been missing out. What's, what's it being revealed? Like in game footage? So yes. yeah, in Warzone, they're gonna be revealing like you know how Fortnite does. It's gonna be actual multiplayer, or maybe not multiplayer, but like in game footage, whether it's campaign multiplayer, or anything. It's gonna be in Warzone. That's really cool. dope. That's yeah. So, I'm so yeah. So we'll see. We'll see movement. We'll see. I was telling um. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, it'd be really cool if, like, that's how they introduced, like, 4v4 or 5v5 to us. Uh, if, like, for example, like, one of the one of the gameplays is, like, four people coming off spawn. And it's like, oh, shit, it's 4v4. Like, I know in the um, the post, I'm not sure if you guys saw me tweet about it, but there is a, there's an M16 in there. Mm -hmm. And I've been begging for a burst AR meta since Black Ops 3. Mm -hmm. And so... I mean, I think it's just the small things that, again, people are just so focused on. Oh, if I'm gr if I grind out this game, then nobody's gonna be able to touch me in the next game. It's gonna be a completely different game. I feel like because mm. uh, with how broken Modern Warfare was, it's a different developer. Um, probably gonna be completely different with the CDL with a lot more rules just because of how messed up this year has been. <laughs> so I mean, I think people just need to play it by ear and just be smart and not overplay yeah so i think the last thing i want to ask you guys because it kind of brings us into the cold war conversation a lot there's a lot of talk it's probably going to be online next year but a lot of states are obviously opening almost fully opened up and there's definitely like there's so many ways to make it safe do you think that people are going to continue to go to LAN events like even though AGN caught so much shit for their self and like they got canceled or whatever do you think that Cold War they're going to try that again or do you think they're just going to say fuck it and just stay all online like 
in the Black Ops 1 League, it was all online. They didn't have any... They had barely any events. It was just like about, this. You're talking about local and major? Local and major, yeah. Local and major. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I think local events, I think it's a bit harder. You know what I mean? Because there's... You know, it's really just only, like, the organization. Like, I know Rod was not going to do it. Like, Rod knows shot. He holds events. Uh, if there's, like, you know, the risks that there is right now. Um, you know, if it clears up around January, it you know, probably will. But, like, um, you know, I... I think there will be local events. Do I think there should be? Probably not. Do I think there should be major events? Yeah, I do think there should be major events. I mean, look how much money is being put into the league. I think it's ridiculous that they don't have a COD champs. Like, I genuinely, like, in, online. Like, I think it's ridiculous. I know the pros agree. I mean, like, I know we're not nothing compared to the, like, you know, the NBA. But look at them. They got a bubble, right? There's no way we cannot do a bubble for a week. You know? Yeah. A week. That's all you need. A week. And I think it's ridiculous. I really do think it's ridiculous with how much money they don't really care, or uh, you know, I I don't think they care enough about us. Like I'm I'm ta I'm not talking about like the pros. I'm talking about like the people who like orchestrate everything, because it, it it could have easily been done. You know, they have enough money to do it, enough everything. It, you know, it should have been done. So I, I think especially with next year when coronavirus hopefully won't be nearly as big of a deal as it is now. I think it can be done. Local events, it's different because there's sweaty people breathing and huffing and puffing right next to each other, rubbing against each other. But major events, I think, easily can be done, at least on, like, the pro scene, uh, the pro level. Maybe not. I, I, I don't really know how it'll work when it comes to, like, AMs competing. But for the pros themselves, because I, I don't know if there'll be an open bracket this year, or, like, because I know there wasn't this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's the same way that there isn't, um, like, an open bracket, I think they're, they could easily do majors for pros. Yeah. I, I was saying that the hundred thousand or whatever that it was that they put into predicting the proper bracket could have easily been put into taking safety precautions for every single player that was right. involved to champ's private jet flight could have been put into every single player's coronavirus test could have been put into that many tests. Yeah. exactly and into every single person's hotel room all it takes is enough time for everybody to stay in their room everybody get results back and then you just go out and then at least because you know there are faulty tests whenever you are not on camera or playing at your look the setup should have been like on stage it should have been in the booth like it was at umg and mlg a long time ago i don't understand why it wasn't to begin it was with. some it's some dumb safety hazard it was it, it was a bunch of it's just an excuse uh, man okay excuses the booths were so hyped no but seriously though because like you, other esports do use them I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if Cisco does them, but I know League of Legends yeah. other two use them. They did. Back when, uh, I think it was like 2015, 2016, uh, they did. I know it's crazy because like CS has a very big like viewing, like consistently. And so I remember uh, like it was just one of those things where it's like you grew up and you're like, dude, like, um, like AW champ. Like, just imagine you're in a booth so and you just won champs. And it goes from a, you're in a booth where it's completely silent and it's only you and your teammates, and then you win. And then all of a sudden you can hear the crowd in this booth that's supposed to be like soundproof. Like, I was just one of those things where like, oh, it was like, damn, it'd be really fucking cool to play in one of those. Right. But yeah, uh, it would be, yeah. I know, like, I know they did say it was a money thing. And again, I think the $100,000 for the right bracket is stupid. Um, I think they were saying it would take up to like $7 million to hold a bubble. Like to hold a proper bubble with like 100 percent safe precautions um but i think the thing with that was more or less because i mean again like everybody was like well cdl is having a four million dollar tournament all this like i think activision alone be like 300 million off this game and so but i think the big thing there was more of on activision and infinity ward of not wanting to do a bubble more than the cdl um no, yeah. I think next year. I think next year if it comes down to it, and Treyarch might do it because Treyarch loves the competitive scene. Um, but I think just Infinity Ward's lack of care and love. Like I'm, I think you guys have probably both seen this, but the it was like a co-designer was like, "Oh, esports is ruining our game. Like competitive Call of Duty is ruining Call of Duty because it's like all these pros are asking for all these things. It's like." Uh, I don't know. I just think overall it's a developer thing and not something we should be like, oh, the CDL has this money. Like, why are we not doing it? 
Yeah. Because those, yeah, those, teams, those teams' money also probably goes towards player care in general, contracts, um, just all – I think like, I – I think all in all, there's a bunch of extra shit that people don't think about. And it's not as simple as, hey, just fly the pros out, put them in a hotel for two weeks, and let them play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree with where you're coming from. Um, I was going to say the last thing that I had a question about. Ah, uh, fuck, bro. It lost my mind as soon as you had uh, said that. Fuck, give me a sec. I got to think of it. Um... <laughs> Damn, bro. I guess I'm going to blank on that one. I guess we can just end it here. We've talked about a lot of stuff, so unless you guys have anything that you guys would like to mention or bring up, I think well, we've covered a lot of bases. One to just one map one against Paris, if anybody cares. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shit. Well, hopefully everyone watching this has a great rest of the day. Hopefully you guys... Also have a great rest of your days. Give me a little shout outs to your Twitters. Liam, Colby. Uh at I I Sigma. Uh at C Trip underscore. And any last words you guys would like to say for the podcast. Okay. Appreciate you having me. I miss you guys. I haven't been in the COD community or really talked to any of y'all in a minute, but I appreciate it. I like doing these things, so it was, it was definitely nice having you on, having me on. So both at you on later in life. Yeah, no for sure. Colby, would you like to say anything? You just not, not really. I don't really have much to say. I mean, I'm glad we're doing this. I hope there's people out there that actually like uh, enjoy what we have to say and take in what we're saying. Because I mean, I think between the three of us, Liam's probably seen the most success in terms of being on like a winning team. And uh, so, I mean, I think especially having him on, I think people should definitely. I just hope people take in what we say, I guess you could say. So we're not yeah. sitting here just talking, being like, oh, yeah, this is what this is what we think happened. This is how you improve your game. This is how you become better than all three of us. It's like, I'm super it's bad. She's who listening. He's taking? like, who the fuck is this? Who, who the fuck are these three? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, like this. Yeah, no, yeah, obviously no. take everything I said with a grain of salt because I'm a fucking low tier. But it's just like, nah, but, hey. Nah, but like regardless of how much all three of us have achieved like we genuinely are some smart people and we and we said some pretty like you know intelligent stuff you know and if someone wants to disregard it just because you know they don't think it's like you know some real shit i mean that's fine you know that's their loss like i definitely spoke on some you know good topics i think we'd answer them well so i think it was put beautifully that's a great way to exit with peace